everyone. So today's blog post is an interesting one. It's going to be using a couple of actions in Intex workflow uh, that not many people use. Uh, they're called store data and retrieve data. Basically, what it really allows you to do is have either a, uh, a workflow store some data temporarily in a particular workflow instance uh, and retrieve it later on. Now, you can use workflow variables for that, so that's probably not as handy. But at the same time, you could have two workflow instances talking to each other and sending data back and forth. Now, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to build out a few workflows. Uh, you can actually see in this list here that we have called SR data. We have a parent workflow that has run on a particular item, a child one workflow, and a child two workflow. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's the thing. We want to have our parent workflow be kind of like a processing workflow. So as it runs, uh, it's going to get some messages from other workflows and do some work and then kind of go back to sleep until it has some more work to do. Now, let's have a look at the workflow or the parent workflow first. Let's just go to the top here. Okay. Now, I haven't documented this uh, as much as I usually document workflows, but I want to get this out quickly because I've had uh, similar questions about uh, building these types of workflows out recently. So first of all, we have a build string action that we're just storing the current workflow instance. Right? You can see there's an insert reference button here. We can click on that. Under the common tab or the common properties, there is a workflow instance ID. So we're just storing that in a text variable called text workflow instance ID. We're going to use that later on. Now, the whole purpose of this particular workflow is that it's basically a long running workflow. It's going to continuously run uh, and periodically look to see if there's any messages that have been uh, you know, sent to it. Now, it does work on uh, the timer service. So in this case, we just have a loop forever. You could potentially have like a loop until a particular item field is set to a particular value or something like that if you want to be able to turn it off nicely. Uh, but we're just going to loop forever in this one. Now, in this particular environment, I have my safe looping turned off. Uh, so if I don't have any delay inside the loop, if we don't have any data uh, to process, we basically go into an infinite loop and use up as much CPU power as possible. But what I'm doing is just doing a delay for one minute. Now, here is the retrieve data action. So the first thing to note is what we're doing is we're actually uh, looking at the current workflow instance. We're looking for a particular piece of data called data message. And if anybody has set that, uh, that item to a particular value, we want to retrieve that and store that in a variable called text data. Okay, so think of data message as almost being like a global variable for a specific workflow instance. Right? And a global variable, what I mean by that is it is, uh, it is outside the current workflow. Even though it's linked to this particular workflow instance, the actual variable lives outside that workflow, which means other things can actually update that variable. Okay, now, the next thing we have after we've done the retrieve is we check to see if the data is not empty. So if it's not empty, that means we have something to do. Right? Let's just double check how we're doing this checking the text data, which is what we store our retrieve data uh, value, checking if it's not empty. And all we're doing here is we're logging it to the workflow history, right? We're just logging that data. And then what we're doing is we're updating that data message variable to just a blank value. So we just have a variable called text blank that has no data in it. Okay, that's all there. Now, in normal cases, what you'd be doing in this type of process is maybe storing a, a URL to a document, an item ID, something like that, that this workflow would pull out and then would actually go and do some processing rather than just log into the workflow history. This is just a proof of concept to make sure that this actually works. Now, the thing that I actually skipped over is at the very top, I have the very first action being set field value. Now, all this is doing <clears throat> is storing the current workflow instance in the current items title field, right? That's all it's doing. So if I jump to back to my list, you can see when the parent workflow started, it stored that ID. You can store that anywhere you like, as long as your other workflows that need to read that can actually get it from somewhere. So that's that workflow, very easy. Store the current workflow instance ID somewhere where my other workflows can read it, and then 
go into a loop that periodically checks to see if anybody has sent me any information or any data. Okay, that's that. Now there is another situation where you may want to, uh, to do something, for example, rather than uh, just having this long running workflow, you could have a single running workflow, like a parent workflow, that does have child workflows where it uses the start workflow action. And in this case, what you can do is when you start a child workflow, you can store the child workflow instance ID in a variable. And in that case, instead of having your child workflow send information to the parent, you could actually have the parent workflow send information to the child. Right? And that's at runtime, rather than just the, the initiation uh, variables that you can send to child workflows when you start them. This means that you can actually have a running workflow sit there, wait, and then you have this uh, parent workflow send some information to it. So it's just another way of, of sending some data back and forth. Okay. Now let's have a look at what child workflow one or child one workflow and child two workflow look like. Well, let's actually go here. This is the child one workflow, and you'll notice the child two workflow looks exactly the same. We have two actions here for build string. We're storing the workflow instance ID in a text variable. You can see that that was from that title field. We're also storing some dummy data. In this case, we want to send ABC to our parent. And in child workflow two, we're actually sending DEF, just to make sure that our parent workflow is getting different data and we can differentiate when we're getting different data from different uh, child workflows. Now, finally, we have this action here, which is the store data UDA. In this case, we have uh, a few things we need to pass in. First of all, we have what is the name of that uh, global variable right? or the item name. In this case, it's going to be data message. That is what our workflow is looking for. So if we look in our retrieve data action, we're looking for something called data message. We are passing in the data. In this case, it'll be ABC for child one workflow and DEF for child two. And we're actually uh, telling it what is the workflow instance ID. So what we want is the store data UDA to do all the work for us. And we'll have a look at what that's doing in a moment. Let's close that. All right, now let's have a look at the actual UDA. So I have a couple of little debugging actions in here, the log actions, just to make sure that the data is coming in correctly. You can see I'm storing in my workflow instance ID, data name, and the data value that I want to send through. I have a Boolean or a yes, no variable in my UDA called Boolean continue and it's set to yes. It basically tells my user defined action to continue looping while that is set to yes. Now, you're probably wondering why are we looping? Why aren't we just storing data? What we're talking about here is a specific workflow instance and this concept of kind of like this global variable. Now, the global variable that we're using, or we've given it a name called data message, it is one variable, right? You can have multiple in that you can have data message and data message two and data message three, etc. But in this particular example, we're using one global variable called data message. Now, what that means is that if you have child one workflow running and it sets that global variable to ABC and then you run child two and it sets it to DEF, it will overwrite the existing value. That's why in that original workflow, we have a retrieve. And if we found, if we, if we, uh, found something, then we're going to do something with it and then we're going to reset that global variable to a blank value. That way we know that we, if we continue looping, uh, we don't keep processing the same data. Also, it means that when you look at the user defined action, we're going to retrieve the data. So we're going to do the same thing as that parent workflow. And then we're going to set a condition. If the data that was retrieved is empty, right? That means nothing has set it yet. Then we're going to say, uh, drop out of the loop right set that boolean continue variable to false we're going to drop out of the loop and then we're going to store that data in uh, in this global variable now i've actually hard coded that so let's actually change that and use the parameter ok 
Okay, there you go. So we're using the three parameters that we pass into the user defined action. I probably need to do the same thing with this one. I think I've hard coded that one as well. I have. Okay, let's get rid of that. And that way. Okay, there we go. Done. Now, so this is what this is doing is basically going into a loop. We're going to come in here, we're going to check the current value. If it is actually set to something, like for example, if this is child two workflow, then what we're looking at here is we're saying, get that value, it's going to get some data. And what we're going to do is we're going to pause. We're going to do a delay for one minute. And then we're going to come back around it and we're going to try it again. This gives the parent workflow some time to process that. So we're going to continue waiting until the parent workflow has actually processed it, reset the value, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to set that uh, that global variable again, and then this workflow will finish. So you can see how this is a nice little reusable user-defined action that you can use. We're passing in all the information, but we're also making it smart enough to check whether the data has already been set uh, before we actually set it. If it's already been set, let's wait a little while, give the parent work with some time to process, and then do its thing. So let's have a look at what's actually happened. Now, if I click on this action here, oops, let's actually get out of here. We're going to go into view workflow history. And you'll see I've done a few tests here. Right? But you can see that in the span of two minutes, I actually ran child workflow one, child workflow two, and child workflow one again. So let's have a look at child workflow one. You can see it ran all the actions. If I click on click here to show detailed view, these are the parameters that we're passing to it, the workflow instance ID, the name of that global variable, and the value we want to set it to. And we've checked that the current value, it was empty. So we're going to continue on uh, and we're going to close that, you know, close this particular workflow. Let's take a look at workflow two. Again, you can see it's done all the actions. They're all green. They're all completed. We're doing a little bit more work here. Same sort of information, except we're passing in DEF to the user defined action. We actually did a check and currently because child workflow one ran and the data hadn't been processed yet, the current value is ABC, which means we go into a pause. When the pausing is complete, we check again. In this case, now the values is blank and we're going to set it and we're going to complete this particular workflow. Let's jump back out and check that final workflow, which is child workflow one. Again, this is also completed because it's been a while since I've ran these. Again, you can see the current value was ABC. It waited for a little while. In this case, it says one minute. My default timer service set to a five minute polling period. So it was five minutes. But the next time it ran through, it actually found another value. It was DEF. Right? Again, we're going to go into a bit of a wait. And then finally, it found nothing, which means the workflow can continue on, set that value or that global variable, and this workflow can finish. Now let's have a look at what the parent workflow looks like. You can see the parent workflow is still running because in this case, we do have a long running workflow. We have this action here, this uh, action set, it's yellow, which means we're still doing some stuff. But you can see, let's actually expand this as well, that we've gone into this, we've gone into a loop. We were in, actually we're in a pause at the moment, but we've already gone through some of these actions where we've retrieved data, checked the, the data value, and stored the data or reset it to zero. Let's have a look at what's actually happened. You can see we have a whole bunch of information here, but this is where it gets interesting. We're doing a pause, doing a pause, doing a pause. We're not finding anything. Finally, we found ABC and we've logged it, which basically means we've processed that data. Then we go into another pause and we found DEF. Then we go into another pause and we found ABC. Now, if you're looking at having a process like this run, Something I'd recommend is you definitely look at modifying your timer service to run on a one minute polling cycle instead of five minutes, because that will speed up. You could potentially make this a little bit smarter uh, in that you, you know, once you've actually processed that data, you can uh, you can check it again, make sure in that little period of time if something has already uh, reset it. This is just one way of processing some data. Now, although my workflow is only passing in one piece of data, right? Either an ABC or a DEF. You could definitely have it store whatever you want. You can use multiple global variables. 
you can also have one global variable and maybe pass in a semicolon delimited uh, array of data, right? Maybe have a number, some text, some more text, another number, a date, etc. Right? It's just another way of, of thinking about, you know, having a workflow that processes some data. Now, of course, the other way around this is rather than having to use the store and retrieve data, you actually have a SharePoint list where you store data. Uh, the only downside to that is that you're constantly reading and writing and deleting uh, data from a list. All right, there's some good things and bad things about that database. Probably, you know, things will grow uh, accordingly to handle that. But it's just another way of processing. I want to make sure that you guys are aware that this is uh, these are two actions, the retrieve data and the store data uh, that you can utilize. I did try to find other ways to speed things up. Uh, but because you're using a single, because of this particular process that we built and we're using a single global variable, uh, there's the child workflows that set that variable will overwrite any data that's already in there. Now, alternatively, there is another way around this. If you have a parent workflow that does start child workflows and you need those child workflows to send data back, what you could do is actually pass in that uh, global variable name to the child workflow. So instead of just passing in a static variable name, what you could do is have, let's say you have three child workflows, you could have start child workflow one, two, and three, and for each one of them pass in a slightly different global variable name. Data message one, data message two, data message three. You know, or even use the current workflow instance ID if you want to be you know, really smart in to make sure that any other workflows aren't overriding the same sort of global variables and things like that. You don't need to really worry about that too much, but it's a way of, uh, of doing, of handling that data uh, communication between workflows uh, and not have to worry about uh, you know, doing this kind of wacky sort of looping that we're doing in delays. Anyway, hopefully this will help you. I'm going to share these workflows and these and the UDA or the user defined action on the blog post. So feel free to download them if you have any questions. Make sure you add them to the comments at the bottom of the blog post. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this video.